imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the ninth of Muharram. At night you hear noises coming from outside your tent. So naturally you come outside to see what the commotion is about and you see people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain salam, in their hundreds and thousands. For just a split second, your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain There and then, you decide you're going to stay. Knowing 100% what's going to happen to you when the morning comes. The morning comes. It's the day of Ashura. You're now the 73rd companion of Abba Abdullah al Hussein You come up to the Imam as the companions did and you offer your service. The Imam gives you the choice. So now you know you could go and get water with Abu Fal al Abbas. You could protect the tents of the women and children from attack. You could bring back the severed body parts of the companions. You could try to console the Imam. What would you want to do on that day? I think I'd say two replies. One would be to protect the tents and everyone inside the tents. And second would be to go with uh, the double father of boss to get the water. But at the same time, I can't really decide this. I think if if I'm if I'm with Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein will decide this. Whatever Imam Hussein says, that's what I will do. But then again, where would you go? Why the women and children? I mean, it's like your personal connection with each, each story in Karbala itself. So for me, let's say the Sakina, Salaam Ala Aleha, for me, it's, it's difficult to see such a young child go through so much but but me this question itself has just it's sort of blown my mind but I don't know what would you do when they come to slap her face when they come to pull her earrings from her how would you react Or you said Abbas alayhi salam. What would you do if they cut his hands? Or when the arrow goes into his eye? If I could, I'd, I'd be at each place at each time. Now imagine one day you finish work, you come home. You open the door, you see your family running around frantically. One person's bringing fruit, another person's bringing food, another person's making tea. And you grab one of them amidst the chaos and you say, what's going on? And they turn around and they say to you, someone's come to see you. So you ask who and they say they're waiting for you in the living room. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk inside and you see Imam Hussain alayhi salam sitting in your living room. 
in that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? I'd want, I'd want to ask him if he's satisfied with me. Yeah, I'd want, him, I'd want to see if Mum is satisfied with whatever little things that I've done, whether it's Muharram or even throughout the year, the little, little things that I've done, which I don't know if they're worth credibility, but these things that I've tried to sort of do for Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. But my, my initial reaction, I, I'd, I'd just drop to my knees. Yeah, I'd drop, I'd drop to my knees. You've now spoken with Imam Sain alayhi salam. It's time for him to leave your home. He gets up to go. How do you feel in that moment? What would you want him to say to you as a farewell? What would you do in that situation? For me, Imam Hussain, even if it's a physical farewell, Imam Hussain is the king of my heart. So Imam Hussain lives in my heart. That's one way to think of it. But other than that, I'd request Imam Hussain to take me as a slave with him for his entire life. At the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago having hindsight of the tragedies that occurred on that day. It might be easy to say, if I was there, I would do this, or I would stop that, or I would help with this. And I said to you, the Imam would give you the choice of how you want to serve him. In this day and age, people often forget we have a 12th Imam with us. And in a way, him being hidden from us is him giving us the choice for us to decide how we want to serve him in the best way, in our opinions. What do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? What would you like to do? What do you think he deserves? Given again that Imam Hussain had 72 with him on that day. Whereas how many has this Imam got today? I think there's a lot more that we need to do. There is a lot more. There is a lot more that we need to do. And it's, it's, it's sort of surprising that how we don't think of the Torf Imam as much as we should. Now, first, first things first, we, with all the events throughout the year, Muharram, Arba'in, you know, all the Wiladad, Shahadat, we, we need to be active, it doesn't matter. But as well as that, pers on a personal level, for myself, I need to be, I need to give my 100% with my Salah, with my akhlaq with everything because otherwise I'm not honouring my Imam if he's, if he's present, I'm not honouring my Imam خدا کند که بیایی خدا کند سنور غیر نوائیم خدا 
کنم